Hello, my name is Alcivan Yuzen Ramos, and today I will be sharing with you the Shakuhachi Japanese Bamboo Flute. Today I will be talking a little bit about the history, the philosophy, the uh, way to play it properly, uh, how to approach the practice of the flute, and an introduction to a basic Zen piece we call uh, Honkyoku, or solo Shakuhachi music. The Shakuhachi's history is veiled in mystery. Some say that it originated from Egypt and India, the Middle East, but historians do know for, for sure that the origins of the Shakuhachi have come from China. And in, the, uh, in China, the Shakuhachi was known as the Dong Xiao or the Xiao. And that was uh, a very thin shakuhachi, uh, much thinner than this shakuhachi that we know today. And it had six holes, sometimes seven. And they were all in the front. There was no thumb hole uh, on the xiao. <clears throat> Around the sixth century, um, the uh, shakuhachi was imported from China into Japan. At that time in history, the Japanese were um, 
heavily studying the Chinese culture and brought back many things, and the shakuhachi was one of them. So, uh, the gagaku shakuhachi uh, was used uh, not for a very long time in the orchestra, maybe uh, 100 years or so, and then it got phased out. And then, in the 16th century, the shakuhachi uh, came back and was taken by the these group of beggar monks called komoso or the rice straw priests and they used the uh, the shakuhachi um, as a tool for their med their begging and uh, for their type of meditation that they did then around the, the uh, 17th century, the, uh, the Zen monks uh, got hold of the shakuhachi and they transformed it into the shape that we know today using the root end and um, uh, composing pieces that we play as the foundation of our practice. In today's world, there are various schools of shakuhachi. For example, the Kinko school, the Tozan school, and the Myoan school or Meon school. Uh, but the Meon school or Myoan school of shakuhachi is a school that's directly connected to the Komuso monks or the monks of emptiness and nothingness, which forms the uh, historical basis of the shakuhachi. And the Komuso monks uh, were the ones that transformed the flute into the shakuhachi that we know today. They're the ones that discovered the root end of the shakuhachi and how it was uh, uh, it developed. It, it, it made a, a really beautiful tone due to its tapered bore and um, the actual name of the shakuhachi means one foot eight inches. One shaku in Japanese, ishaku, eight sun or hasun. So they just shortened the word to shakuhachi. And so this length, 54.5 centimeters, is just uh, the name of the shakuhachi. It's a very generic term. And there's also various other names that shakuhachi, um, that shakuhachi practitioners uh, gave it. For example, there's, they're also called take, which means bamboo, or uh, kyotaku, empty bell, or uh, hochiku, bamboo of the dharma. These are just a few of the romantic names that people have imbued shakuhachi with. <clears throat> So the Komoso monks of the 17th century uh, were the founders or the originator of the shakuhachi that we know today. And in those days, the shakuhachi or, uh, was going through many uh, changes and, uh, and developments uh, along with the, the culture of Japan and the, the political system of Japan. Uh, there were uh, many, many samurai that lost their jobs or uh, their positions as uh, uh, one of the highest levels in society because at that time the shogun of the country, of, of uh, the ruler of Japan at the time, so to speak, took away a lot of the power from the samurai and uh, so they, the samurai looked for jobs uh, in different uh, areas of the country in different levels of, levels of society to sustain themselves because they had no more work. And a lot of the, the samurai went into uh, sects of Zen such as the Komuso sect uh, uh, they call Fuke Shu or the, the Fuke sect of, of Zen Buddhism. And the the Fuke sect of Zen Buddhism uh, was a very small Zen sect based 
uh, in the Rinzai tradition. And the, uh, a lot of the, the monks, uh, or the, uh, the samurai, um, were not very spiritually uh, conscious, and so they took a lot of their rough um, training from their samurai days, and they uh, developed many, many stories of uh, the samurai using the uh, blunt end, the root end of the shakuhachi, as a weapon, uh, because it was replacing their swords, since their swords were taken away from them. And so there's this, this uh, history of this uh, of, of shakuhachi as a martial instrument because of this, the, the samurai's training. And, um, but there, of course, there are lots of uh, sincere shakuhachi people who were uh, focused on the peace and the, the playing of shakuhachi as a spiritual tool, um, which uh, I will be talking to you um, next, the practice of Sui Zen. In the practice of meditation in Japan, uh, Zen is the most popular um, practice that, not, that has been exported from Japan. Uh, Zen basically means meditation. And um, in spiritual practice, in Japan, there are many kind of Zen. Uh, there's, for example, sitting Zen, where you sit in <clears throat> a lotus or half lotus position like this, and then you focus on your breath, and you attain various levels of of, of awareness from sitting. That's called zazen. And through uh, the uh, through, uh, uh, from Zazen branched out many kind of Zen. For example, uh, the, there's walking Zen, there's uh, uh, Zen that is standing Zen, uh, there's martial artists have imbued their practice that Zen and the martial arts have, have uh, merged and the practice of martial arts itself is a practice of Zen. And with that, the shakuhachi, with the influence of Zen, uh, that it deeply influenced the Japanese culture, the practice of sui zen came to be, and sui zen is basically means blowing zen. And when we you practice spiritual shakuhachi, that's basically what you're doing. You are uh, blowing, and you're focused on the experience of the moment. Uh, you're highly concentrated on following your breath through shakuhachi, uh, the sound, on how, you, how your body is positioned, all that so that you're intensely focused on the moment. And um, so this is basically the practice of Sui Zen. And through Sui Zen, the monks composed these these po tone poems, so to speak, uh, that were um, compositions based on the, the, these uh, particular sounds that came from the shakuhachi, and they formed the basis of the honkyoku, or the uh, original pieces of the shakuhachi. And uh, the video uh, started out with uh, one of the, the basic pieces of honkyoku that you uh, eventually learn in, in the practice of shakuhachi. And this is uh, intimately tied to sui zen, uh, blowing zen, the practice of honkyoku, and um, the, your mind or your, how your mental state is when you play the shakuhachi. You can actually practice sui zen without knowing honkyoku. You can blow just a straight tone, like like this. Just like that. And this is Sui Zen. This is blowing Zen. 
but uh, just historically, the Honkyoku are the foundation of learning how to to get deeper and to and concentrate into the sound of shakuhachi. So, um, great way of, of developing your playing is to learn uh, suizen and to learn the honkyoku and to do it in various um, um, environmental and situational uh, circumstances such as going out into nature and playing in the cold or in, in uh, by the ocean into the wind and uh, on top of a mountain. This is our excellent ways to uh, practice suizen and to develop your playing, your playing uh, skill, as well as uh, uh, being exposed to uh, different circumstances so that you can control your body and you can control your mind so that you have a stable and, um, and relaxed uh, sound when you play. And even uh, playing in front of, of uh, an audience is part of Suizen in my opinion. Um, many people, in the old days the, the shakuhachi was not supposed to be a tool for performance so to speak. It was only relegated into the temple and for austeri austerity uh, purpose like begging. But today um, the uh, shakuhachi has developed into a performance instrument and so the performing in front of an audience is I feel a very uh, great way to develop as well Susan and your concentrated mind and relaxation in, of your mind in any circumstances it's a great practice I feel fundamental to all Japanese art forms from martial arts to flower, ar flower arrangement to tea ceremony and especially shakuhachi is your body and its posture. So when we practice shakuhachi, you want to make sure that your, your spine is, is erect and straight. Imagine you have a string uh, like dancers do, uh, pulling up on your uh, top of your head so that your spine is, is elongated and stretched. Your shoulders are relaxed and like in meditation, Zazen, you want to feel that there's this curvature to the bottom of your spine. So you feel that there, okay? And you want to sit at the edge of your chair when you sit on a chair so that you don't slouch like this. It's, it's, it's not it's not good for your whole uh, posture and your breathing system. So you want to have this openness so that your, your lungs are, are, are expanded uh, <clears throat> and you have room and you want to feel that your diaphragm has, has uh, room to expand. So, um, <clears throat> so make sure that yeah, you have good posture when you play shakalachi. So the next thing I'm going to I'll talk about is how to hold the shakuhachi. So the shakuhachi form itself, the root is the bottom, the bell, and the utaguchi or the singing edge, the blowing edge, is the top, the flute. And there are five holes. The first hole, number one, is the very bottom hole number two, number three, number four, and the fifth hole in the back is number five. Okay, And most players, even if they're left-handed, the right hand is on the bottom. Okay, And when you hold the shakuhachi, the first and the second hole in between, your middle finger goes, of your right hand goes, and the thumb at the back of the bamboo. So you want to have this balance like that. In the, a joint shakuhachi, the, this middle joint is here between the third and the fourth hole. And your middle finger of your left hand is there. And your thumb of your left hand is at the back. 
So we're going to have this balanced holding position. And when you play, you don't want your hands to be like this. It will create lots of tension and uh, uh, it's, it's very bad ergonomics for your hands. So you want to have it really relaxed, but see how my hands go like this? So it's kind of at an angle. It makes it nice and easy. And you want to have this nice flow. Not like this. Lots of students start like this. No, you want to relax. Have your arms floating in between your body and your elbows. And just have a nice relaxed pose right here. So this 45 degree angle is a kind of a, a, a natural um, positioning of shakuhachi. <clears throat> okay, so this is the Hold, how to hold it. Now comes uh, blowing. So when we start out with blowing shakuhachi, we want to keep three things in mind. The first is how you form your your lips, your embouchure. And uh, the first uh, uh, point to to try to make is the a very concentrated air stream. And the way we, we try to, to achieve that is to imagine we have a, uh, a mouthful of, of seeds uh, the size of a millet or sesame seed. And you want to spit each little seed one by one out. Put a little spittle at the, e the end of your, where it starts to turn wet here in your lips. And just start to make a tiny airstream and it has to be one airstream some people have two sometimes three it if you have more than one you will not make a sound I guarantee so you have to make it saw uh, really fine and make it one single airstream or a little little hole pinpoint you can go into the mirror and look at how if you're doing it correctly okay so in the second uh, idea uh, <clears throat> you need to to uh, to get is the what one of my teachers called uh, the cartoon kiss because it's you want to imagine these big lips with your bottom lip extending out like Bugs Bunny cartoon mm. Mm. So make a ooh sound. Mm. Mm. Make feel that bottom lip coming out. Mm. Okay, so that's important when you start to do what we call karibuki or blowing upwards. Okay, and which is the next, the third idea, which is blowing upwards. So, um, with blowing upwards, you want to imagine first. Uh, try to blow stick your bottom lip out in your jaw and feel the air stream touch your nose and then once you feel that on your nose here then put your air hand here and feel the air stream going on your hand okay now next is a um, combination of the the uh, uh, millet seed uh, opening and blowing upwards, but you want to push a little harder the airstream so that you will see if you go into the mirror, your airstream will turn into a, like a, a noodle, a flat noodle. And so you want to imagine that flat noodle going up to the sky because we're starting to blow up. So you focus that and you feel the air up here. Okay? So those are the three basic principles of blowing properly. Kari buki we say in Shakachi terminology. Kari means blowing upwards or sharply. And that is the 
the standard position of of blowing your basic note. <coughs> um, so medi is a opposite. Medi means flat, and you want to avoid blowing your basic tone medi because it's not a very efficient way of blowing. So with these in mind, I'm going to start you on another exercise, the basic way to, to uh, get into the karate position easily and naturally. So you want to, I'm going to do this from the side so that you can see it easier. So the shakuhachi <coughs> horizontal like this. So you want to have a good position of your back. And then this is horizontal. Just above horizontal, you want to place it here. But you want to make a sound from this position. And this is going to be achieved by sticking your jaw out, because it's the only way you can make a sound from here. So you want to get this. And mind you, this is only an exercise. This is not the, the way you should blow when you're in standard position, okay? So this is just for the exercise. So, to feel the karibuki. And the bamboo here is touching your, your cheeks. And you want to press it just enough in so that and you want to focus and aim the airstream up so that it's catching the edge. That's the only way you can make a sound. And once you get that consistently, you want to pull the shakuhachi down to your 45 degree angle. But you want, you want to hear your pitch rise. And that's the key. You want to hear the pitch rise. So I'll go back to first position and do it from the front. So my jaw is going back into my mouth, into my head. So it's not staying here. You have to put it into your normal position, OK? But hear that pitch rise. And if you hear the pitch rise, you will get to the tonic or the fundamental note in open hole position, which is basically a D in, um, in Western notation, or the roll pitch. This is perfect karibuki position, OK? So um, please work on that. Once you get that basic tone, pitch, you feel comfortable with that, um, then you can start to close all the holes and work your way down to otsuro, otsuro which is a uh, lower register roll. So that is karibuki. It's the basis for making the best sound you, you can on your shakuhachi. And there are many reasons why. It's because there, you leave lots of space here between your 
Airstream and your Utaguchi, that space creates that volume, partly. And it gives you enough space to, to go into your medi position, your dimedi. If it's too medi, you have no room to go deeper. But if you have space, then you can get deep, 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 deep. So that's the reason why you do karibuki. Okay? And you can get the big sound. Ro is the fundamental tone of your shakachi with all holes closed. And you want to practice this with intense concentration and awareness of how your sound is being produced. And when you enter a roll, you want to do it from a soft, uh, from silence, and then catch it softly, and then go to the maximum of your energy, or your sound, and then you trail off. You want to decay nicely back into silence. And this is the, 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 the practice of robuki, or blowing roll. It is the, what will make your sound great and, and powerful and increase your dynamic range in all aspects of your playing. Because the roll, you can apply this exercise to every note that you practice. Now I'm going to talk about the basic fingering for shakuhachi. So starting from the bottom of the flute, which is towards the root. First hole is the bottom hole, second, third, fourth, and the thumb hole is the fifth. So the fundamental tone is RO, R-O, and that's with all holes closed. Second note is TSU, and we open the first finger. Next note is re. We open the uh, second finger. Next note is chi. We open the third finger. Next note is ri. We close one and two, open three and four, and leave the whole five closed. So this is a this is our otsu register. The next octave up we call kan, and kan is played by pushing more air through your uh, your embouchure, so more stronger air pressure, plus pushing the bottom out bottom lip out just a bit, so that you can automatically pop up to the second register or the kan register. And I'll demonstrate just how it is when you, you, you do it. Next note is uh, tsu, con, first finger open. Second figure. Recon. Third finger, uh, chi. For he, this is uh, the octave of ri. We close one and leave five hole open. And then for this next note, we want to close all holes closed and crack the thumb just a bit and we're going to meri for uh, gonoha and our we're a little bit meri on the top on your own shirt okay so i'll play the whole scale again from the top going bottom to the top going to the bottom again okay
also going down. Breathing is very important in the shakuhachi. So I'm going to talk about how to breathe properly in playing shakuhachi. When we play shakuhachi, we breathe in through the nose and mouth at the same time and taking in the air deep into your stomach. And then we want to he we want to feel our stomach expand. And then our diaphragm pushes up the air while the stomach contracts and then we blow. There is in-breath, there is out-breath, and there is no breath. So all those create your whole cycle of breathing. And I'll also show you how my spine is interacting when I breathe in and out. So our back is straight with the curve, right? When we breathe in, the spine goes a little bit down as you inhale and as you exhale the spine comes back up so you have this constant the top of the spine still remains straight this is the base of your spine is flexing with your diaphragm contraction and expansion You want to feel the air fill up your stomach and the sides. You're in constant cycle when you breathe in and out. Okay? So, <clears throat> when you do your robuki. So now I'm going to show you how to properly clean your flute after you play. <clears throat> so first you need a cleaning cloth. We call it tsuyutoshi, which is basically a, a large cloth, <clears throat> like a cheese cloth, absorbent cloth with a, a string attached to one corner and a weight at one end. And how you properly clean it is <clears throat> you hold your thumb at the utoguchi or the the blowing edge, you protect it by covering it like so, and the weight, weighted end, you gently drop down into the shakuhachi, and then you pull the cloth through gently, like that, so that the protecting the edge with your thumb so it doesn't scrape and chip the edge. And when it's properly through, sometimes the joint sometimes can be loose, so hold the joint when it's in the flute and just pull through. And you can do that a couple times, but that is basically how. And sometimes polish the edge here and your chin rest because it can develop uh, some build up in your mouth and so there you go so now we've come to the end of our exploration into the basic playing of the shakuhachi i want to thank you for joining me on this brief journey 
But before I uh, go, I'd like to acknowledge the great contribution and the teachings of uh, Katsuya Yokoyama Sensei. He is one of the key masters of the 20th century to introduce the Shakuhachi to the world. And um, he's responsible for me uh, being the Shakuhachi player I am today. My basic training uh, was imparted to me by his top students, Kaguru Kakizakai and Taru Furia, which I owe a great, great deal. And it was through them that I, I got the, uh, that I was imparted the, the, uh, the techniques and the honkyoku that I teach. So, um, uh, great gratitude and, and appreciation, and um, uh, my. Uh, I owe them, all of them, uh, my uh, greatest uh, uh, gratitude for being who I am as a Shakuhachi player today. So with that, I'd like to thank you once again, and um, please do your best, and uh, blow roll. So this piece I'm going to play is Sanya or Mountain Valley.
Sudanosugumori, nesting of the cranes. <laughs> <laughs> 